Welcome, my beautiful souls. Uh, today, we are going to do by popular demand. A lot of people have been asking me to do this reading. Um, we're going to do a reading on new love. So this would be for anyone who's single. Um, I mean, I guess you could be in a relationship, but you wouldn't be happy. Like, you'd want to leave, I think. Um, so any new love coming in, we're not looking back. We're looking forward. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use, of course, Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. And we'll do that at the end of the reading. We are going to use, if I can pick them up, the Gilded Trail to clarify, go deeper. It's really what we do. For the main spread, I'm going to do a mixture. I'm going to use the Universal Tarot. So we're going to do a line or two of the Universal Tarot. And then I'm going to use the Romance Angels. Um, so again, this is for all signs. This is just for anyone who's single or you're looking for new love. You're wondering when it's coming in. Um, this is definitely a time before we begin the reading. I would just calm your mind. Many of you know I read through my spirit guide. So I feel like my guide. I don't know why I always say I feel like my guides connect to your guides. And that's why a re one reading can resonate with so many. Your spirit guides are helping. So definitely feel free to ask your guides for confirmation. Is this reading for me? What part of it? Maybe the whole reading. Um, chances are it is the whole reading. Sam's out cutting grass. Hopefully you can't hear that. By the way, today is my daughter's birthday. Jenny Love Chiro. Many of you um, already follow her. She hasn't been active on her channel because she took a job outside the house. And, um, but, you know, she's still, she's still on her channel here and there. And plans on being there more often. So anyways, happy birthday, Jennifer. Um, she hates it when I call her Jennifer. Jen. <laughs> she feels like she's being yelled at. <laughs> um, so anyways, new love. Singles. Even if you're in a relationship but you're not happy. When is the change going to come? When is this love going to show? Let's get into it, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over for a second. And we are going to start with the Universal Tarot. I'm going to give them a couple shuffles. Everything's always pre-shuffled before you get here. But I do like to shuffle with you here also. I just feel like, I don't know, like when I do a reading, I feel like you're all sitting in the room with me. That's how connected I feel to you. Like, literally, we're all just sitting in a big group. One more shuffle. Okay. That felt good. Let's give him a cut. By the way, one of the main reasons why I cut my cards, you know, each reader does their own thing. And I don't think there's a right or a wrong. But I do it really as a symbol to my guides that I am now open. I am now ready to begin this reading. I was going to say this beautiful reading. So that makes me feel good that this is going to be a good reading. All right. I'm going to bring the lid down. Actually, there we go. And let's begin. Well, we have the Ten of Wands. You know, this may be why I felt like some could be in, like, a relationship, you know, or connected to someone, but it maybe isn't going well. Maybe you've had enough. In the Ten of Wands, I often feel the energy of, like, enough is enough. I can't take it anymore. Um... This could certainly also talk about like you yourself have a lot of responsibilities on your back and it would be nice to have a partner. It would be nice to have a partner, someone to not only share your life with, but maybe help lift some of the burdens. Um, often in the Ten of Wands, I feel like someone is secretly or subconsciously 
Wishing for a tower. Again, it can feel like it's too much. Too much, too much. All right, let's see what else we have. We have the King of Wands. Interesting, because he's looking right over at the Ten of Wands. He has his wand in his hand, and he looks like he's about ready to get out of his chair. This could symbolize um, a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But, you know, it doesn't have to. Um, King of Wands to me is someone who is, I would say, proactive, because this is a love reading. Proactive in love. This is someone who would show you their love, not just, I don't know, like not just say I love you, but also show it. They're, they're someone who puts action behind their words. They're not a fear-based energy. So I don't feel like this is about like fear of falling. Really, I feel like I do want to follow. I do want to fall in love. Okay. We have the fool. A new beginning. The fool is about taking a leap of faith. And a leap of faith you will have to take. But it is so that you can have this new beginning. You know, the fool puts the past behind them. Just extracts the wisdom of the lessons. You know, what have I learned? How have I grown? Sometimes, especially with the Ten of Wands, it's like, I now know what I do not want. And I'm ready for whatever is coming in. Interesting how everything is moving this direction. So the Fool is looking right at the King. By the way, the King can be male or female. And the reason why I say that is because we are masculine and feminine energy, all of us. Um, I know as a Virgo, I'm in my masculine energy a lot more than my feminine energy. All right, we have the Six of Cups. Six of Cups. This talks about happy memories. You know, it's interesting that Six of Cups is mirroring the Ten of Wands, which is heavy energy. This is light energy. It really is a big difference. So I feel like that Ten of Wands is energy that hopefully is now leaving. You know, in the Ten of Wands, sometimes I feel, or there, there is, I forget what deck it is, where it shows someone actually leaving a mountaintop. It's like, all right, I was on that mountaintop. There's nothing left. And they're leaving it, and they're heading to a new mountaintop. May, may not even know that. You know what I mean? It's just about going with the flow as the fool's energy. So, Six of Cups, because we're not looking back, then this would talk about, I feel like even your energy. You know what I mean? Like, when you're feeling down, try to find a way to lift your spirits. Um, um, yeah, I, some of you, ugh. I don't know what just happened there. Some of you, I feel like you may actually be on the move. Like you may be moving. I feel like this is definitely saying that a lot of you have really learned what it is you don't want in love. And you're jumping into that fool's energy. I do feel like that's a necessity. You know, allowing myself to have this new beginning. And it could just simply mean for right now, like I'm allowing myself to leave a difficult mountaintop. A mountaintop that is dried up. And move more into like the lighthearted type of energy. All right, let's keep going. I just noticed that the um, bull has a rose in its hand. We have the star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. This is the card of Aquarius. Um, but this is about manifesting your dreams. You know, in the star's energy, I feel like it's important to understand that it does take our energy along with... Um, let's just say divine, to bring about a wish. 
to bring about a dream. You know, being proactive. That's a really good omen. Especially mirroring that Ten of Wands. You know, I feel like it's simply saying some of you really are understanding um, what it is you no longer want. Well, hello, Will. Hello, Destiny. So, this tells me because we have the full, and that is about a new beginning, and now we have the wheel, that you're moving into a destined period of life. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes, you know, let's just talk about love. Like sometimes the people we choose to fall in love with, they're free, free will choices. You know, maybe they weren't destined to be. Well, I mean, I think everything is really destined. But this, to me, feels like it, it's a good omen. It feels like the wheel is moving. It feels like the Ten of Wands, the, heaven, the heaviness of that energy is leaving. Um, it definitely feels like a dream is about to come true. And it definitely feels like this is the time. You know, like maybe this is when it was meant to happen. You know, I didn't find real, true love until my 50s. Now, it doesn't mean I wasn't in love, but I feel like there's different vibrations of love. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Two tens, by the way. We have the Strength card, card of Leo. Um, it is coming under the King of Wands. So for some of you, it could be Leo. Strength card is really about what you've overcome. You know, it is a courageous type of energy. It is looking within, understanding oneself, knowing oneself. Often you'll see... Um, this image depicted as someone who is part human, part lion. It is an eight, so it also stands for an, a new beginning. It's also the number of infinity, as above, so below, no beginning, no end. To me, that would represent a soulmate type energy. Not soulmate type, a soulmate. Especially sitting right next to the wheel. You know, there could have been something in that Ten of Wands where you don't want to regret it. Because I feel like, especially with the fool looking back at it, it, you know, it's about being proud of who I am today. It's about being proud of the things that I have overcome. You know, it, it's about knowing what I want. I feel like you, you want to kind of go with the flow of the energy also because the wheel was here. You know what I mean? Like, and what I mean by that is I don't feel like I need to be out there looking. Maybe I, maybe I need to put myself out there. Um, but I, I kind of feel this is just something that's flowing. We have the eight of cups under the full. Oh, that makes sense. So, and two eights back to back, by the way, 88. Some of you, that may ring a bell, could be your birth year. Um, but this is about your emotional house. And sometimes we kind of get lost in this energy, focusing on all the cups that have fallen over, you know. But this person's leaving that energy. Look how, look how neatly these cups are stacked up. It's almost like a symbol of where I'm not allowing past emotional energy to have a say so in my future, nor my present. So this person's heading to the nine of cups and they literally are leaving the eight of cups. Nine of cups is about inner harmony. That's good. That makes me feel good, especially with it coming over the or under the full. 
But again, moving towards inner harmony. It's also about fulfillment of wishes in the Nine of Cups. And you have the wish card. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I'm thinking, you know, this new love could also, like eight might be an important number. I remember years ago, I used to carry, I don't know why I don't still do it. Um, I heard it somewhere where if you put an eight, like in your wallet or in your purse, that it's a symbol to the universe for finances to flow, money to flow. But I love the Eight of Cups coming under the full. It's like, I'm not going to focus on anything that's gone wrong, especially the strength card right next to it. Why? Because I've overcome it. Because really, if I look at myself today, you know, I feel you must be proud of yourself. We have the King of Pentacles. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. Um, let's talk about this king's energy, though. You know, because I never think it has to be that sign. I feel like it's the energy of this person. In the upright, I do feel like this person is loyal, um, methodical, probably is doing well in life. This is someone I feel like... You know, if I connect with, I feel like you'll connect for the rest of your lives. And it's also interesting how I said in the Ten of Wands, it's like, I wouldn't mind having someone to help share these burdens with. Well, he's holding this big pentacle in his hand. And, you know, the one thing about the King of Pentacles versus the King of Wands is... This can be someone who, mm, how do I say this? Um, until I get to know you, I may not utter those words, I love you. You know, that's one of the things I feel that they themselves have to overcome, like allowing love to flow. But I feel like because... It's coming under the Six of Cups. This person feels very playful to me. So I feel like they themselves have also learned, you know, who they are and, you know, what's held them back. And now what they want. You know, that's probably why we're seeing two eights. One may be for the King of Wands and one may be for the King of Pentacles. And both of them are for you. All right, well, we're going to take what's face up first. And we have another eight, 888. There's some new beginnings. There's some new love in the air. Um, You know, it's coming into the star card. But I think about, I bring about. Now, does it mean like I have to constantly be focusing on bringing love in? Because honestly, I feel like love happens in the most unexpected of ways. But the fool's like, I'm open. I like who I am today. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. Nobody's perfect. But I do enjoy who I am today. Interesting, I just realized that not only do I feel like you feel like you're, or let's put it this way, as this starts moving towards you, I feel like it's bringing out your inner child. It feels very playful. I like that a lot. You know, romantic. But playful, playful romance. It's also fast moving energy. Under that star. So remember, remember that what I think about, I bring about. And this eight is mirroring the wheel. So it's almost like you're telling the universe, I'm ready. I'm ready to leave this mountaintop. And I'm ready for something new. I feel like you yourself are moving into a more hmm, carefree type of energy. 
And then the star, again, bringing your wishes into your real life. That's why what I think about a bring about is important. You know, I've learned what I don't want. I now know what I do want. But I also feel in, when I say that, it's not about telling the universe like, okay, I want someone who is Italian, has dark hair, dark eyes. No, I want someone who's loving. I want someone who who's playful. I want someone who's giving. Someone who doesn't play games. Um, because I, can, I have no interest in this reading of anyone coming towards you that plays games. No. I feel like you've been there, done that. And then, well, hello, Knight of Swords, coming into this reading awful quick. And he is coming right next to the Eight of Wands. Actually, I'm going to connect them because I'm going to take the Romance Angels next. This could be communication. You know, I feel like the Knight of Wands carries truth, integrity, and also mirroring the wheel. Destin. You have the star again right above that. So I feel like who's ever coming towards you or you to or both of you towards each other. Again, you both sit on each other's wheel. So that makes me feel soulmate. Um, I feel like they want the same thing. This is this doesn't feel like anyone I have to talk into loving me. Like, and, and listen, maybe I don't need to move too quickly, though you do have two energies that are moving quickly. But I feel like I need to jump back into the fool's energy. And the fool really is appreciating each and every moment. Well, I, you know, I say that, but then I think that's hard to do. But let's just say I'm living in the present moment, I'm not looking back. Not looking for, I'm just I'm in my present moment energy. I'm willing to take a leap of faith. I don't know if you can hear that lawnmower, it's so loud for me. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Mm, five of cups. Five of cups. I have a feeling this is why a lot of you have reached out and asked me to do this type of reading. Five of Cups, um, not an easy energy. It's definitely energy of what feels like loss. You know, it is those cups that were knocked over. It is on the bottom of the deck, though. The problem, or the, I don't know if I want to say problem, um, the issue, let's say, with the Five of Cups is I just have to be careful. I'm not allowing myself to get stuck in the woe is me you know chances are someone didn't love you the way you wanted to be loved or the way you deserve to be loved but that doesn't mean that somebody else can't and someone else won't this is a five change and many of you who follow the channel know what i'm about to say next when i decide i'm not going to focus on what i have lost i'm going to jump into the fool's energy there's two cups behind this person. That represents soulmates. But right now, their focus is on what they have lost. This is on the bottom of the deck, though. That is good. So I feel like you are making that change. Listen, and I don't even feel like it's about love. Like, I'm not making this change so that I can then bring in love. Maybe some of you. I feel like you just want to feel good. I just want to feel whole. And that's what the fool offers you. You know, it is about, it's like a grateful type of energy. And I feel like when we're grateful for the small blessings, I feel like it just opens up the door to new blessings. And we know that the star are new blessings. It follows that has a wheel. It has the wheel. All right, I'm going to slide this up. 
And let's slide it over. Look at that, the full like is jumping out there. Get them back in order. And let's bring in the Romance Angel. Something makes me want to look. All right, we have justice. So some of you, it could signify that there may be ties that you need to cut. And those ties would be connected to cups that are fallen over. Could be energetic ties. This is the card of Libra, by the way. But I feel like when I cut these ties, especially if they're energetic ties, again, where is my focus? Immediately, I feel your vibration lifts. And if we think of the law of attraction, you know, the universe must meet you right where you're at. So if I'm if I'm stuck on what I have lost, instead of being open to the possibilities of what still is out there, what is what new is waiting for me? Automatically, it just lifts your vibration. You know, justice is about making you whole again. And then I love that the Empress, oh, and then and then the world, a new chapter. So this five feels even more important, the change of this five. The Empress. Wow. The Empress's vibration is of a high vibration. This is someone who, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't just, she doesn't focus on what she's lost. She's always creating something new. This is someone who easily, re well, I shouldn't say easily, um, but mm, in a way, um, receives epiphanies, ideas, signs on which direction to go. Again, that fool's looking right at that king. All right, let's bring in the romance angels. And by the way, the world being under there does signify a new chapter. So that's why the change, I feel like, is a necessity. Doesn't You know, you don't have to be perfectly healed, but yet strength card tells me that you have looked within yourself. You understand yourself better than you ever have before. I do feel like you know what you want. You know, you know what type of vibrational energy you want as it relates to love. All right, we're just going to take these right under. And then we'll come back and clarify. Or really go deeper. Trust. Trust. The situation is calling for you to have faith. My granddaughter's name, Faith. The situation is calling for you to have faith. Trust right under the wheel. You know, I got to believe it can happen. I got to believe that love can find me and I can find real love. Because if I don't believe that, am I not sending that out to the universe? Like, mm, I don't believe you. I don't believe that love's ever going to find me. You know, and it reminds me of some comments where our people write that. Like, no, I've given up hope. And I get it. I totally get it. Um... But at the same time, in a way, you're saying to the universe, like, no, I want no change. Look at this. Worth waiting for. It's worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. Well, thank you very much, divine. I love that. So even though this may have taken some time for some of you, I love that it's saying that 
it's worth the wait. You know, again, it reminds me of finding true love in my 50s. Even though I have had love, it's a different type of love. All right, playfulness. Well, I felt that right from the get-go. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Playfulness. Coming under the full. It's exactly what the full is. That's exactly what, that's the full's energy. Under that eight of cups. So you're letting go of the old. And you are opening yourself up to the new. And then look at this new love. I love this because that's exactly what we're looking at. New love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. So if it hasn't happened yet, get ready. I would say my best advice for you right now is to jump into the fool's energy. And that means allow yourself to live in the present moment. The past is the past. What have you learned? Extract that, but then let the rest go. And then new love, playfulness. Well, that's what I felt within the Six of Cups. That's what I feel like in the fool's energy. And the star who's manifesting destiny, saying it's, it was, it's worth the wait. You know, sometimes it's like if if my focus, again, is on what I have lost, you know, the cups that have been knocked over, it can turn into woe is me type energy. That's why it's a five. That's why it talks about change, right? And again, those two cups that are behind that person. New love. Trust. Worth waiting for. Playfulness. New love. I couldn't have asked for anything more. Forgiving and learning. Interesting. I just put a post out yesterday that talked about that. That talked about, you know, the necessity of forgiving. And I love that it also says learning. You know, it probably has something to do with that Ten of Wands. But I never feel like I have to pick up the phone and call someone and say, I forgive you. It's just about, and sometimes it can be just, you know, forgiving oneself. Maybe I wasn't a free will choice, or maybe it was a karmic type love or relationship. And I'm talking about the past. Some of you could still be the present. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moment. That's why we have the full. Release your ex. Release them. The time has come to clear your energy. And then love yourself first. Put yourself back out there, right? Know that you are worth loving. Know that you are lovable. Doesn't mean you're always in that type of energy, but knowing it in your heart. Release your ex. Why? Because I feel like your ex probably played a number on you. Forgive, release, and then come back to you again. That's the full. New love is coming. Trust. Trust that, it, it, that it's been worth the wait. You know, and I also feel sometimes that as our own vibration raises, which 
I do feel like it's a necessity because again, the universe is matching our vibration. So I could say that I want a high vibrational love, but yet I'm still stuck on the past. I'm still angry. I'm still mad. That's the energy that I feel like I've just got to let go of, you know, not. And, and by the way, I do feel like as soon as the, as soon as the two of you connect this new love, as soon as the two of you connect, then I feel like your past will mean nothing. You know, no, no, I mean, you learn from it, but other than that, it's like, okay, now I get it. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. Let me repeat that one more time. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. Trust. This situation is calling for you to have trust. All right, let's slide these over. And let's go ahead and bring in the Gilded Tarot. This feels like a very romantic, playful type of love. It just does. It, it do, And it feels like the past has nothing to do with this. The past has taught you some valuable lessons. And because I feel like the Eight of Cups, and by the way, this king is also looking at the Eight of Cups. And because in the Five of Cups, there is a soulmate energy behind this person. Maybe both. I've gone through similar type energies. I feel like I feel that often, you know, and then we can help each other to overcome those last broken little pieces of ourselves. Now, this may seem simple, right? But I want to remind you that the Ten of Wands is that first energy. And... I also want to remind you that in the stars energy, it is about manifesting, well, here, new love, but working hand in hand with divine, with your spiritual team to bring about what it is you really, truly want. The Knight of Swords to me, fast moving energy, the Eight of Wands, fast moving energy. And normally I would say take something slow, but Sometimes things just do move quickly. Sometimes you just know so quickly that this is my person. Like, I can't believe I spent all this time worrying and, you know, wishing, trying to understand why someone else couldn't give me what it is I need. Well, that's their own lack mentality. You know? Sometimes we fall for people who just don't know how to love. Or they're takers and not givers. I know that's not what you want. Excuse me one second. Okay. All right. So I don't remember if I cut them. So we're going to go ahead and give them a cut. Introduce them into the reading. By the way, that's why um, I cut each deck because as we open up a new deck, I like to introduce it into the reading that's already on the table. Just giving you a little background into how I read. All right. I have to say, I love our spiritual team because I wanted this to be about new love. I did not want it to be about, I didn't want it to be about someone coming back. I wanted it to be about something that's brand new for you and new love coming out. It's like my guides are paying attention. Your guides are paying attention. So let's start at the beginning. 
but we will read it as a whole. I have a feeling release your ex has something also to do with that Ten of Wands, whether you're currently together. Eh. When I say together, I feel like, I don't know if you're together, together. You know, maybe it could certainly be like someone who's played mind games with you and, you know, that's not what you want. It's not what you deserve. But you have to know that. You know, it's interesting because the Ten of Wands is the hardest energy on the table. And everything else is light. Everything else is playful. Everything else is, you know, I, I feel like whoever it is that you're connecting with, they too had to go through the same type of energy. They too had to release someone. They too probably, you know, were in a relationship where maybe they were the giver. And again, someone else on the other end was the taker. You know what I mean? Like, wasn't fair. Well... But this wheel's moving. All right, we have the moon. Card of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. The moon can certainly talk about uncertainties, and that can be a little scary. That's why you have to have trust. That's why your, an or your, your angels and guides are saying, trust me, this is worth waiting for, or this will be worth waiting for. I don't feel like it's too far away, to be honest. So. This is also very dreamy energy. And I often feel in this energy, some of you could have be some of you could have had like vivid dreams of someone, but yet maybe there was no face. If, does that make sense? Like I had a dream of I didn't know it was Sam in my dream, but you know, that my daughter and I went to this party and in this party. There was a bunch of people that I didn't even know. But then she pulls me out to the kitchen and I'm sitting at this little table and there's a man at the kitchen sink and he's got his back to us. He's washing dishes. And there was something about the man. It was just the man's energy that made me get up and I wrapped from behind. I wrapped my arms around him, around the man. And he literally put his head on my shoulder and I knew that it was Sam. I just knew it without seeing the face. So that's why I'm that's why I'm saying that. Well, I mean, that's not it's not because of my experience, but I do feel like, you know, you could certainly you, you know, your guides might be helping you in that way to have trust. Now, I feel like this is more about dreamy energy to be honest with all the playfulness on the table. All right. We have Seven of Pentacles, one of my favorite cards. First of all, Seven of Pentacles teaches you patience. But Seven of Pentacles to me is your tree of life. And these Pentacles are your seeds of intention. And not all the seeds come to fruition at the same time. That'd be overwhelming. But it is a representation of one of these seeds is coming to fruition. You know, I relate this to like an apple tree. I'm not going to pick an apple before it's ripe. What's the sense, right? It would just be bitter. I'd probably just throw it down. But I feel like because we also have the wheel and we have these two cups and we have new love, that's a seed that's coming to fruition. That's a seed that you can now pick. So patience, right? Ties back to trust. Coming over the king of wands. And what I'm saying is in the seven of pentacles, it's energy that's just meant to be. I often feel soulmates plant certain seeds before they even come into this lifetime. You know, 
Let's get together at a certain time in our lives. But then we are born with the amnesia. I know a lot of people don't like when I say that, but it, I feel like it's a fact. And I feel like part of the fun, part of the adventure, because remember the soul, the spiritual being knows that what we're doing here on earth is having human experiences, human adventures. The spiritual being knows that we've been through this before. We've done this before. But I also feel like, can we find each other? Well, that's where your guides come in to help you. We have the devil, heart of Capricorn. Now, the devil can stand for temptations. It can certainly be illusionary energy. Um, if it's not a Capricorn. So, you know, in the, because we have the Ten of Wands, it could, it could cer certainly talk about energy that you just kept getting tempted back to. You know, it's like somebody promises you the world and then delivers none. We have the Page of Wands, my little risk taker. My little risk taker. You know, I feel like this is a good way of looking at life. I feel like the Page of Wands is someone who does take chances in life and not all of them pay off. But that's okay. At least I took that chance. This is someone who gets back up again and, and doesn't say, that's it. I'm going to shut myself down. I'm going to shut myself off to love. Now, maybe for a period of time, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? This is all in your divine timing. But this is my risk taker. Also interesting, um, coming over the Six of Cups, where, again, treasured happy memories. It's almost like you're starting to remember your soulmate. And I mean intuitively, spiritually. And I feel like this is saying that you are going to take a chance. Also, it's coming, or it's mirroring new love. And love yourself first. And then look at this, Six of Swords, which I feel like is great energy um, because in the Six of Swords, I feel like you do have to look back one card. And that's the Five of Swords. That's where the toxicity lies. That's where things weren't going right. Someone could have been toxic. You know, their toxic energy kind of held you down, held you back. Kind of makes sense with temptation also on the board. But this is you saying no more. This is you leaving that energy. Like, the Six of Swords to me temporarily can feel difficult, but it is the promise of calmer waters. Beautiful beaches, you know what I mean? Like, just imagine yourself on this, on this boat, and that's what you're heading towards. You're heading towards the sun, and these beautiful, beautiful waters and beaches. It is mirroring... Um, the Ten of Wands. So that's good news. It's coming over the star. Maybe that's part of what I really need to do so that this can start to come together. I got to let go of the toxicity. Maybe that's your ex. And maybe one of the ways I let go of it is I do forgive. And that doesn't mean you have to say it to them. It just means you're not willing to carry that energy with you any longer beautiful the eight of wands again interesting the eight of wands mirroring the eight of wands so like-minded energy coming over the wheel With trust right below it.
I don't feel like this is energy. It's going to move slow. No matter what I tell you, I feel like it's just going to, you know, I feel like it's going to evolve very quickly. And I feel like this is about two people who are like-minded. And I feel like that's a good thing. Another way of saying that is it's about two people who are on the same vibrational energy. You know, both have released the past. Both are stepping into the future. By the way, we now have four eights. Almost makes me want to look for that up. Maybe I will at the end of the reading. We have the high priestess. High priestess is your intuition. You know, the high priestess is your GPS for this lifetime. It's a gift. It's like a muscle. And the more we trust our intuition, it's like the, the stronger it grows. You know, I'm someone who really has learned, really through my own life experiences, to trust my own intuition above anyone else's. And I want to say, like, in any reading you watch, trust what your own intuition, even over mine. But. This is your GPS. You know what that tells me is that you will be guided. You don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? I feel like what this reading is really signifying right now, it's about clearing old energy so that new energy can start to enter. And then, oh my gosh. So right over the eight of cups is the nine of cups. How interesting, because that's exactly what I was talking about with the Eight of Cups, that this is where you're heading towards. Some of you, it can mean that you're becoming single. Or that you are now single. But you're enjoying it at the same time. Doesn't mean, you know, maybe I am, I do want love in my life, yes. But other than that, I'm kind of enjoying my life. You feel free. And the Nine of Cups is also about fulfillment of wishes. Here is the star card. I love that the Nine of Cups just came out, just came over the Eight of Cups because that's what you're moving towards. Don't look back. You know, and I'm saying that because the devil's right above that. And that can be energy, again, that can tempt you, right? You know, maybe I'm saying goodbye to someone here. I've had enough. And they may try to tempt you back again. But again, I feel this feels very clear to me that you know what you no longer want. And you know what it is you do want. And that may be a requirement. You know what I mean? Like you have to be open to this for it to manifest. Though, again, I want to remind you, love happens in very unexpected ways, in unexpected times. But I just love that. But there's the strength card again. Look at the mirroring energy, first of all. Over the king. With new love right below it. The page of wands right above it. Right? My risk taker. I'm willing to take a chance. On what? On new love. It makes me feel like this king also had to deal with some emotional issues. Also had to learn who... They were, had to overcome some things, but really standing in a very strong place now. Doesn't mean everything is perfect in my life, but I know who I am. And I feel strong within myself. Strength card is looking right back at the Nine of Cups, that inner harmony. You know, it's almost like, well, we'll see, but I feel like temperance should be out on the table. Because I feel like temperance is the one who makes sure that both the soulmate's energies 
um, both their cups are equally filled. I'm so glad I did this reading. I thank you for the ones who kept saying, and I had a lot of you like, I don't want to, I don't want to look at my past. I want something new. Well, that's what your spiritual team is bringing out. New love. All right. Six of wands. This is the energy of victory. By the way, it's coming under another six. I only point that out because I myself am noticing all the synchronicities. You know, I feel like this is the energy of where people can truly look up to me because of action steps that I've taken. And some of you, it could be something you do for a living now. You know, taking those old hard lessons. And because you have learned from them, you could be helping others. And that's quite beautiful. And I feel like if you're if if that's the type of energy you have, it makes sense to me that this would also be the time. Some of you may have a platform and there may be someone who like watches you. And I don't mean that in a weird way. Um, you know, like someone admiring you from afar. But I don't feel like it will be from afar for long. Chariot. This is the vehicle that really takes you to your unlimited potential. You know, the chariot, first of all, is the card of cancer. Um, it is, I think the chariot comes in when we're ready for the chariot. Because it is the balance of both the feminine and the masculine. It's the balance of the light and the dark within ourselves. The chariot is driven by your intentions. Seven of Pentacles, there are your intentions. And then it does represent unlimited potential. You know, the only limit would be what our human mind would put upon it. The divine energy is really unlimited. And to me, it's it's signaling that chances are this is someone that you will spend the rest of your life with. And I say chances because I have to consider that you have free will. I have to consider that they have free will. But I feel like I have, I feel like the people on the board right now have come so far that I definitely feel like they'll take this chariot and they'll take advantage of it. It's coming over trust. The situation is calling for you to have faith. Then we have the Six of Pentacles. This is that fine art of give and take. Remember how I said earlier, I felt like, you know, there are givers and there are takers. Now, it's not the way it's supposed to be unless that's one of like the lessons my soul wanted to learn. And that's another thing a lot of people don't like to hear. However, I feel like that's something you should be proud of. You know, the things that I have overcome, the people that I've overcome, you know, the things that I were temp that I was tempted to, I'm no longer tempted to. Be proud of that. Be proud of you. This is a very empathetic and compassionate energy. This is people who really do want to help others. Like, like I want to help the underdog. I want to help lift people up. And, you know, if you're in that energy, then you do deserve the highest form of love. This could certainly be a lesson I had to learn, though, along the way. You know? Was I giving and giving and giving and someone else just took and took and took? And is that how I want my life to be? I don't think so. What I love, though, is because it's coming over worth waiting for, it feels like both souls are very compassionate and empathetic. It's probably why we saw the Empress also. You know, this is where I want to give. 
but I also have to learn to be open to receiving, especially if I haven't received. You know, I may have shut that part of myself down, but I need to be open. Three sixes. That's just what I can see. I'm trying to think if there's any other underneath. And what did I say? We have four eights. So far. We have the hangman. Hangman's mirroring the devil. But it's also loving yourself first. So to me, the hangman is seeking wisdom spiritual wisdom, but to use on this physical plane. And maybe I don't move until I find that, until I understand that. Also, I feel like because it's mirroring the devil where temptation, someone could be trying to tempt you back. The hangman is like, uh-uh, no way. So it is a pause in the action. But again, this is because someone is really seeking wisdom. And I feel like what it's really saying is it is important to really love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. You know, it's like sometimes people are afraid to set boundaries because they're afraid they're going to scare someone off. Not, not a real love. You won't scare them off. And coming into the Nine of Cups, listen, maybe spending a little time alone is not such a bad idea. You know, like, especially if you're just getting out of a difficult relationship, like enjoying the freedom. But then knowing that it won't be long until someone new comes into your life. But there's nothing wrong with taking that time to just enjoy Right? Just enjoy your freedom. And the high priest is right next to it. You will be guided. You know, when it's time to move, you'll move. We have the three of swords under the strength card. Hmm. That's probably why also the hangman is there. You know, I feel like for some of you, you may have given someone like three opportunities to love you the way you deserve. And probably each and every time they've let you down. But because it's coming under the strength card, this is also what's being healed. That's your heart. But I also feel like it's your counterpart's heart. I see the synchronicities. I see the vibrational energy. And I see how similar it is. You know, you don't have to be fully healed before new love enters. Because I do feel like soulmates really do help heal each other. Okay. This reading seems very clear to me. I hope you feel the same way, but to me, it just feels so clear. And because we are talking about new love, you know, it doesn't hurt that someone also had gone through some of the things that I have gone through because then they understand you and you, them. Hello, lovers. The lovers. Beautiful. Look at the energy of the lovers. One of my favorite images because the divine feminine, it's like she can feel the masculine's energy. You can see that he's not there in person yet, but his energy is chemistry, 
undeniable. You cannot deny it. You can try. Now, this is a card of Gemini. The meaning of the card is a head over heart decision. And that might be the case because the lovers, or me, I'm sorry, the three of swords is right before it. But again, it's like I can't deny the energy I feel. And remember how I said in the moon, some of you may be having these dreams. Again, the masculine's energy is there. But it doesn't seem like he's there in person yet. Yet. Lovers mirroring the chariot. Hello. Unlimited potential for these lovers. And let's just take one more down here. And then we'll bring Mother Mary into the mix. You know, I feel like the reading's so clear. I don't even want to go back and like re-clarify um, re anything because I feel I just feel it's so clear. By the way, I love that the Nine of Cups is right in the middle. Knight of Swords again. The Empress has made her way to the table. And she's coming over, love yourself first. Well, the Empress. She, what she, one of the things that she's learned through her experiences is how to keep her heart open. She is loving. She is nurturing. But she is also very powerful, very strong. You know, if... This Knight of Swords feels like it may be someone who, again, may try to pull you back. But no way. Not with the Empress. And it's coming over. Love yourself first. Very creative. Always receiving epiphanies. This is someone who pays attention to them and just follows them. Like she doesn't really even quite, she just knows that her intuition is leading her. No one can pull the wool over your eyes any longer. To me, it's, it's representing how far you have come, how much you yourself have grown. And it's an energy to truly be proud of. By the way, I also feel like some of you may have like a mother figure who is part of your spiritual team now. You know, like a mother or a grandmother, a big sister, um, who's helping to guide this together. Because I do feel like you're being helped here. You're being guided here. And we have one more card. Well, hello, Ace of Pentacles. What a beautiful energy to come in right now. Because to me, the Ace of Pentacles means this is coming into your physical world. This is not just a dream. It may have started as a dream. This is what is coming into your physical world. You know, a lot of times you'll see this Ace and you'll see roots hanging down from it. And to me, that's a symbol of this is energy that can truly take root. Now, the one thing with the Ace of Pentacles, though, is I'm either going to take this pentacle and use it to truly enhance my life, or I'm just going to let it dry up and die. You know, I feel like the ball is always in your court. You always get to say yay or nay. Of course you do. But what a reading. Because, first of all, new love. Right there. The lovers. This is like a road map, which I feel like most of my readings are like a road map. You know, maybe I can't get here until I understand here. You know, I've got to know where I've been and where I'm at right now. And finding that strength within yourself and being proud of who you are. You know, and again, it doesn't have to mean that everything, like you're completely healed, but you're moving towards that. You know how I said the masculine? 
you could feel the masculine's energy, but it wasn't here quite yet. Here it is. This is this love now coming together. This is this love coming into your physical world. And I love that it's sitting next to the Empress. The one who is loving and nurturing. But again, no one's full. Wow. Um, I feel like I want to look up. My fan drives me crazy. Angel number eight, 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 eight. Okay, this this angel number suggests that wealth, well, let me turn my volume down, that wealth or fortune is coming your way. But it also advises not to stray from your chosen paths once you obtain abundance. Okay, that's one. Um, angel number 8888. Oh, you know what? I put one too many eights there. Let me take one away. Oh, well, okay. The angel number 8888 is a sign that the fruits of your hard work are manifesting in your life. In the mat in matters of the heart, the appearance of angel number 8888 indicates a period of profound love and harmony. Let me read that one more time. 8888 angel number where did I go? Oh, I lost it. Where was I at? Um, angel number. Da, 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 da. Where did I just see that at? Oh, in the matters of the heart, the appearance of angel number 8888 indicates a, a period of profound love and harmony. Here's the harmony. Here's the love. And by the way, it is very seldom that I stop a reading to look up a number. I think I've done that. Let's just say, I think I did that one other time um, this month. And that's it. It's profound love. Man. Are you being guided? Do you believe? That this is a period of profound love. It makes complete sense. All right, let's take Mother Mary over this beautiful reading. And I just want to thank our spirit guides because I feel, and I hope you do too, that this is so clear. You know, what I want to remind you when you're watching readings is don't skip over the lesson part because it is those lessons that allow your vibration to lift. And because this is a, high, a, a higher vibrational love, it's important that I understand that. And again, for some of you, there could be someone who tries to pull you back, but there's no way it's going to happen. I just don't feel like, I feel like there's no way. All right. Mother Mary, what do you have to say over this beautiful reading? We have quiet, quiet. I go into peaceful silence and I listen. I go into peaceful silence and I listen. By the way, I also feel like this is representing a mother figure, again, as like part of your spiritual team, helping to guide us together. And when I say a mother figure, you know, I feel grandmas, I feel big sisters, I do feel mothers. And look at this, father, father. 
Now, I have to tell you, the first thing that came to me is some of you could have been in a relationship with someone who could have reminded you of your father, whether it be good or not so good, you know, and it doesn't mean you didn't love your father. You know, I can use my own father for an example. I was a daddy's girl, um, but I 100% saw how he was with my mother and it wasn't good. You know what I mean? Um, And he cheated a lot. And even though I was a daddy's girl, you know, the person I marry in, well, I was way too young to get married. I was 19, but was just like the worst parts of my father. So I'm just saying that. But some of you, it could be a father that's also guiding you. But let's read. My true father is God in heaven who shines healing light upon me, my birth father, and our relationship. So we have both the father and the mother. Quiet. I go into peaceful silence and I listen. I feel like you're listening to your beautiful spiritual team and they're just help they're helping to guide not only you, but who will be, I pray, your future love. And also, not just your future love. But I feel like a future love that potentially will last forever and probably beyond. It makes me go back to that five of cups again. Now do I want to make that change? I don't want to focus on what I have lost. I want to start thinking about what is new. You know, I want to start just enjoying myself allowing myself to go back into a playful state. And I just, I just love this reading. I just love this reading. I feel like our guides were, their ears were open and they listened to exactly what it is, what type of reading um, I wanted to do. And they answered the call 100%. So I thank them. I thank you. And I feel like I'm going to let this be because I feel like there's nothing I need to clarify. That's how clear I feel it is. I hope you do too. I can't wait to read your comments. I really can't. And, um, you know, for those who are looking for new love, thank those who have sent me these comments over and over again. Talk about new love, Sandy. Talk about new love, Sandy, because I'm dedicating this reading to all of you. So I thank you. I love you. I can't wait for this to come about for you. I hope that you just allow, just allow, you know, it's all in divine timing. And that's, that's the best thing. You know, the more I just think about raising my vibration by letting go of what's not serving me any longer, no longer being tempted back to lower vibrational energy just because they don't want me happy, you know, and I start to love myself again. I am telling you, it, you know, it just sits upon your wheel. It's part of your destiny. And your spiritual team, I feel like both now mothers and fathers, helping to direct this beautiful love together. I thank them. And again, I thank you. I love you guys. I really do. Um, I love doing these readings for you. I just do. I love doing these readings for you. Hello, lovers. Hello, Ace of Pentacles. Coming into my physical world with the Empress, open, loving, nurturing, powerful, strong, both have overcome, both are on the same vibrational wave, and both are in divine timing. Amen. I love you guys. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.